Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at top 10 interview questions that you can expect as part of your help in Kubernetes. Now, help is your package manager that uh, we can use to install packages within our uh, Kubernetes cluster. And this is something very commonly used in case you want to create uh, easily deployable packages within your Kubernetes instead of you know, creating all the manifest files and everything manually. So whether you're preparing for an interview or you're just looking to enhance your skills on Kubernetes Helm, then this video is just for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is what is Helm in Kubernetes and why is it used? So like I said, Helm is your package manager that can be used for Kubernetes. And this simply helps us to uh, simplify the deployment, the configuration and management of our applications within the Kubernetes cluster. So it's like, um, you know, you run one single command and that command will take care of uh, uh, installing all the package for us. So it's, this helps us to package the uh, Kubernetes resources into charts. So the packages in um, uh, Helm, we call them as charts, which are simply like templates for our uh, Kubernetes applications. Now Helm allows you to define, install and manage even the most complex Kubernetes applications very efficiently. And uh, it's very useful for uh, automating your application deployment, uh, managing very complex configurations, and then also enabling versioning of your applications. So simply, it is a package manager uh, that can be used for Kubernetes. The next question we have is what is a Helm chart and what are its main components? So the Helm chart is basically uh, what we create when we talk about the package. So it is simply a collection of files uh, that describes the related sets of your Kubernetes resources. And when we talk about the components of your Helm chart, so it contains a chart.yaml file. This is where we define the name of the chart, the version, uh, description, any dependencies for your uh, chart then we have the values.yaml uh, this is where uh, we define all the default configuration values and this can be overridden during the deployment so it's like the default variables or the default values then we have the templates now this is the directory where uh, the kubernetes resource templates are defined like your uh, deployment manifest file your service manifest file all those are defined defined within this templates directory then we have the requirements.yaml file and this is where we define the dependencies that are needed for the chart. So uh, this was uh, deprecated in Helm 3 and now the dependencies are managed directly in the chart.yaml file. And then finally we have the helpers.tpl and this is where um, it contains all the reusable templates that can be used across uh, multiple templates within the chart. So when we talk about your Helm chart, so it contains a chart.yaml file, values.yaml file, templates directory, requirements.yaml file, though that file is gone with your Helm 3 version, and then we have the helpers.tpl file. The next question we have is how do you install, upgrade, and roll back a release in Helm? So to install a chart um, using Helm, we have this command Helm install the name of your release and then the name of the chart. Now this command will help you to install a chart. Uh, if you want to upgrade a release to a newer version or to a newer configuration, then we can make use of this Helm upgrade command. So you need to give the release name and the chart name. And at any point, if you want to do a rollback to a previous version, then we can simply use Helm rollback the release name and the um, uh, revision name. Now, this can be particularly useful when you want to undo any recent upgrades that might be causing an issue. So we can make use of the Helm commands for it. The next question we have is what are Helm values and how can you override them? 
So Helm values is where we define the configuration settings. And for this, we maintain a file which is a value, values.yaml file. This is where we define all the uh, configuration settings. And if you want to override these values, there are three ways that you can override them. One is from the command line. So uh, you can use this argument hyphen hyphen set uh, key equals to value to override the values uh, that are defined in the values.yaml file. So the example command would be helm install hyphen hyphen set and let's say replica county set to three. So you want to uh, override this value then we can make use of this argument. Uh, the other way we have is we can maintain a separate values file and we can call that by making use of the hyphen f argument and then the name of the um, uh, separate yaml file. Now we can use this to specify custom values um, that override the default values. And then we have the environment variables. So some CI CD tools uh, allows us to um, uh, define our environment variables to dynamically set the values during deployments. So that's these are the options that can be used to override your um, uh, configuration settings that you are defined in the values.yaml file. The next question we have is how does Helm handle dependencies between charts? So in Helm, your dependencies are managed through the dependencies field in the chart.yaml file. And uh, this was previously handled in the requirements.yaml, but now with the newer versions, we are handling it in the chart.yaml file itself. So dependencies in other charts, uh, so basically your dependencies are nothing but uh, dependencies that other charts um, uh, you will need within your uh, uh, current chart, whatever you're trying to install. So Helm will help you to fetch and install these dependencies when you install the parent chart. So uh, whatever chart you're trying to install, it is dependent. If it is dependent on other chart, Helm will take care of those uh, dependencies. And you can make use of this Helm dependency update command to download and manage those eight dependencies. You can also specify the specific versions to control the compatibility. If required, you can uh, go with the specific version as well. The next question we have is what is Helm's values.yaml file used for and why is it important? So values.yaml file is where we declare all of our default configurations for the chart, like the default variables. Uh, now this allows you to define your parameters and the settings for the uh, Kubernetes resources in the chart. Like, you know, you can define your resource count, uh, replica counts, your resource limits, your image tags, your environment variables. So all those values, the default values can be defined within this values.yaml file. And this file is very important because this is what makes your chart more flexible and customizable. And it also allows the same chart to be used in uh, multiple environments. Like, you know, you can uh, use the same chart in the dev environment, your staging environment, your production environment. And you can do this by simply overriding the values. So we have already told you how you can override the values. So you don't have to create multiple uh, charts. You can use one chart, but then replace the values, use your values for different, different environments. The next question we have is explain how Helm uses templates and Go templating in chart files. So Helm templates makes use of the Go templating engine and uh, this enables dynamic content generation in Kubernetes manifest files. Now these templates are stored in the templates directory of your Helm chart and it uses these expressions like dot values dot key to inject values dynamically. Now Helm, when, when you're running the chart, Helm replaces these expressions with the actual values from the values.yaml file or uh, the overrides during the installation. So Go templating also allows conditional logic, looping and reusable functions, making your charts highly customizable and also reduces the need for hard coding your configuration. So, if you want to make your um, uh, functions reusable, um, if you want to make your charts reusable, then templates is very important. This is where you can have your dynamic values defined and uh, the values will be picked from the values.yaml file. 
The next question we have is what are helm hooks and how can they be used? So helm hooks are special annotations uh, that allows us to execute very specific tasks at different points within your release lifecycle like uh, during the pre-install or post-install or pre-upgrade, post-upgrade, pre-delete, post-delete. So during these specific life cycles, if you want to execute very specific tasks, we can make use of your Helm hooks. Now this can be useful for tasks like uh, database migrations or some cleanup scripts or some configuration checks, some validations. You can make use of this. For example, you might use a pre-install hook to check for the dependencies before we are deploying an application or we can uh, use this post delete hook to remove any custom resources after the release is deleted All right so basically customizing controlling your tasks when you want those tasks to be executed we can make use of your helm hooks for that next question we have is how would you use helm to deploy the same application to multiple environments with different configurations so if you want to deploy uh, your Helm charts to multiple environments, uh, but then you want to uh, use different configurations, you can create separate value files for each of these environments. So like one uh, value file for your dev environment, uh, one value file for your staging environment, uh, one value file for your prod environment. And then uh, you can deploy this chart by calling the respective value files for each of your environment. So the command would be helm install your release name, your chart name, and then hyphen F, and then you can call the specific uh, uh, value file for that respective environment. Now this approach will allow you to uh, have different configurations based on your environment. So like um, you, the replica count for dev would be let's say two, uh, the replica count for your staging would be three, and the replica count would be five for your production. So you can have different values. Likewise, you can have uh, separate environment variables, you'll have separate uh, resource limits, and all of this can be done without modifying the chart itself. So you can control this by making use of your uh, values, the uh, YAML file. The next question we have is what are some common troubleshooting steps uh, when a Helm deployment fails? So for this, we can check the Helm logs. Um, so we can make use of this Helm history uh, command and also the Helm status command to understand what went wrong. Uh, we can verify the Kubernetes events and the logs. So we can run commands like kubectl get events, kubectl logs to see if there are any errors related to the pod itself. Uh, we can validate the helm templates so we can use this helm template chart name to render the templates and check for syntax or any logical errors before uh, applying those charts we can also do a dry run and debug so we can use this helm um, install hyphen hyphen dry hyphen run hyphen hyphen debug to simulate the template and see if there are any config errors and then finally, we can check for any resource conflicts. So make sure there are no existing resources with the same names that could be causing the conflicts. So these are some troubleshooting that can be done. And that brings us to the end of our top 10 interview questions as part of your Helm for um, Kubernetes. Again, Helm is something very commonly used when we talk about your Kubernetes, when uh, you want to have a package manager and uh, uh, create easily deployable uh, packages. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel for more content and please leave your feedback in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.